Thank you. Thank you. Hunger is a political condition. We have the food, we have the resources, we have the brain power, we have the infrastructure, we have everything that you need to end hunger except the political will. It really is that simple. I first got involved in this issue um, when I was a college intern at American University here in Washington, D.C. I interned for Senator George McGovern. No relation, believe it or not. I thought he had a great name, and I thought that's why I should work for him. Um, it was the best thing I ever did. But he championed uh, issues to combat hunger. And I sat through countless hearings uh, as he interviewed doctors and nutritionists and how he interviewed mayors, and they talked about the reality of hunger um, in their communities. And I, I was inspired by, by his example and by the fact that he, under, he tried to fix this problem using political means, working with Bob Dole in a bipartisan way. They strengthened the food stamp program. They strengthened WIC. They strengthened the school feeding program. And believe it or not, in the 1970s, we almost eliminated hunger in America. And then in the 1980s, we started to cut holes in the social safety net, and people began to fall through the cracks. And we've digressed. Today, in the United States of America, the richest country in the history of the world, there are close to 50 million of our fellow citizens who are hungry. 50 million, 17 million are kids. Now, you know, Archibald MacLeish had this great line. He said, you know, we're so inundated with facts, figures, and statistics that we've lost or we're losing our human ability to feel them. Well, you know, let me tell you, behind those statistics are real people, senior citizens, families, children, veterans, our neighbors. Getting elected to Congress in 1996, I have met with countless people, I've lost count, who have come to my office who are hungry, mothers with their children, asking me, what, what are they gonna do? They don't know where to get food. I've had fathers come in and, and break down and cry because they, they feel ashamed they can't provide for their families. Senior citizens who you know, can't afford their medication, their fuel assistance, and their rents, and food, don't know what to do. I've been to, I, I, I've lost count how many food banks and food pantries I've been to, but I've also lost count how many times I've seen people in the parking lot waiting, you know, families waiting, waiting for everybody to clear out because they were embarrassed that someone might recognize them when they go in and ask for food. And the face of hunger, by the way, is not just the unemployed or the homeless. The face of hunger in America today includes a lot of working people. We have, we have people who work full time for a living and who earn so little they can't afford to put food on the table for their families. I think there's something wrong with that. I think in this country, if you work for a living, you ought not to have to live in poverty, but that's a whole other debate. But the bottom line is we have a big problem in this country, and it demands more attention than it's getting. I mean, hunger costs. You have kids who go to school who are hungry, who can't learn, who can't concentrate. I've been to classrooms where I've seen kids kind of looking off into space, you know, not, not able to pay attention because all they want is something in their bellies. You have senior citizens who take medication on an empty stomach who end up in the emergency room. You have children who have, get, the, get a common cold, but their immune system has been so compromised that they're in the emergency room, and they end up staying there for days, if not weeks. Your workers who don't eat, there's a, there's a loss in productivity. It's billions of dollars that we're paying to sustain this scourge of hunger, and it really has to change. We all have to be part of this movement for change. Now, in Washington and a lot of other places, people don't like to talk about it. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to talk about the fact that there are 50 million citizens in this country who are hungry. It's uncomfortable to talk about all the children who are hungry in this country. And then you have the people who, who deal with it by kind of demonizing the poor, saying everybody on this program is just lazy. You know, uh, they don't want a job. They want government assistance. The fact of the matter is that the majority of people on programs like SNAP, which is, used to be called food stamps, you know, are senior citizens and children are, and the disabled. And of those who are able to work, the vast majority of them work. There is not a community, not a congressional district in America that is hunger free. And who's to blame? We're all to blame. All of us, every one of us, not just members of Congress, but everybody. We need to be part of the solution here. You know, um, people say to me, well, you know, you talk about hunger all the time. Well, you know, Hunger doesn't exist in America, it only exists in places like Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, and, and the poorest countries in the third world. Well, that's starvation. 
So we don't see a lot of people with sunken eyes and swollen bellies here in the United States. But we see a lot of hungry people, people who do not know where their next meal is going to come from. They miss one, two, three meals a day. It's all over this country. It's here. Uh, and we need to do something about it. And I've tried to raise the issue in Congress. I give a speech every single week on hunger. Every single week I talk about a different aspect of hunger, hoping that it will finally sink into some of the heads of my, my colleagues. And it's beginning to. You know, people sometimes see me and say, I like your speech. Sometimes they see me and kind of run the other way. But I get it. I'm okay with that. But we need to raise awareness. We need to talk about this. You know, I lived on a food stamp diet on a couple of occasions. Um, and when I first did it, the average food stamp benefit was $3 a day. I did it because a lot of my colleagues on the Agriculture Committee had no idea how much the food stamp benefit was, notwithstanding the fact that they oversee the program. So I lived on the benefit for a, a week and went shopping with some people who received food stamps. And it took me forever to be able to buy my groceries because I had a limited budget, a really tiny budget, $3 a day. I had to put things back when I was checking out. It wasn't a good feeling. It's hard work to be poor. It's not easy. You know, nobody wants to be poor. When I hear people say that, oh, everybody just wants to be on SNAP because it's a, you know, a handout, I want to scream. Who wants to be poor? Nobody does. Nobody does. And as I'm a father, I have two kids, you know, a 15-year-old son and a 12-year-old daughter. I can't imagine the anguish, you know, the, 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 the maddening feeling of not knowing whether I could put food on the table for my kids. Nobody in this country, in fact, nobody in the world should have to worry about that, but nobody in this country. Um, and it's about time that we did something about it. Right now, as we're speaking, Congress is talking about a farm bill. And in the House of Representatives, you know, they're trying to find ways to balance the budget. They cut $40 billion out of the food stamp program. $40 billion. What does that mean? It means 3.8 million people right now who are getting the benefit will not get it. It means hundreds of thousands of kids who are eligible for the free breakfast and lunch program at school will not get it. It means that 170,000 veterans, people who serve this country, will be thrown off the program. It is crazy. It is unconscionable. We cannot let that stand. We have to change things. So I'm here to appeal to people to be part of this movement. Talk about this issue at home. Talk about this issue with your elected officials at every level. Write to your member of Congress and say, don't you dare take food out of the mouths of poor people. Don't vote for a farm bill that cuts $40 billion out of the SNAP program. It is unconscionable. Don't vote for programs to cut WIC, the Women's Infants and Children Program, so that pregnant mothers and their babies can have good nutrition, so they can have a healthy life. You know, don't vote to cut school lunch programs, for heaven's sake. We ought to be talking about this more. It ought to be talked about in presidential elections, and in congressional elections, and in mayoral elections. But there's virtual silence. There's virtual silence. And that has to change. We need to do more. We need to do more. You know, and the other thing I would ask you to do is to support us in this effort to try to get the President of the United States to do a White House conference on food and nutrition. So we can bring the best and the brightest minds together and actually have something called a plan. Because right now we do not have a plan. We had a White House conference on food and nutrition once. You know who was president? That guy. Yeah. <laughs> not, not this guy. Uh, that guy. Although this guy might have been a better president, okay? You know, I never thought a McGovern would say anything good about a Nixon, but let me tell you. The bottom line is this. That White House conference that Richard Nixon convened in 1969 resulted in a bipartisan effort to try to combat hunger. It made a difference. It made a difference. Millions of people were fed. Millions of people were given ladders of opportunity to become independent and to, and to move into the uh, job, uh, uh, job force. You know, that was in 1969. We did amazing things. We need to do it again now. We need to do it again now. We need to bring the brightest and the best minds together. You know, in one area, you know, doctors, nutritionists, people who run food banks, people who are on the benefits, poor people, rich people, philanthropists, chefs, anybody who's interested in this issue, bring them together, you lock them in a room, and you say, you're not leaving until we have a plan. Because this problem is that big. This problem is that big. And when you have a plan, and then you can hold people accountable. You can have benchmarks. And you can actually eliminate this. 
Let me just close by saying, you know, we're living at a time when people think really small. You know, it's a big deal if you can pass a bill to put a stop sign on the street. Bottom line is, we have big problems. We need to think big. You know, we, we, need to, we, need to, we need to understand that these are solvable. The maddening thing about the issue of hunger is that it is solvable. You know, I can't quite figure out all the right combinations to get the Israelis and the Palestinians to work their uh, issues out. But I can tell you that this issue of hunger can be solved in this country and globally if we have the political will to do it. Political will doesn't mean partisanship. Political will means using your power as a citizen to demand that your country do what is right. You know, I, I, I've met so many kids, you know, who have come to my office with their parents who are hungry. You meet a child who is hungry, it breaks your heart. It tears at your heart. It, 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 is, it is unacceptable. Uh, it, it, it shouldn't be. And we can fix this. And it's not just about more government programs. It's about connecting the dots. It's about building on the success stories that have happened all across this country, you know, and, and replicating it. This is doable. This is doable. And I'm going to tell you, I can't think of anything more important than to make sure that everybody has enough to eat. Food ought to be a right for every human being on this planet. That should not even be debatable. And yet, all over the world, we have hungry people, and in this country, we have hungry people. We can solve this problem. Maybe our example might be contagious. Maybe we might actually be able to convince other countries to follow suit. Maybe we could find better ways to assist other countries in ending hunger. I used to have a history professor who used to say, the world will not get better on its own. I never knew what he was talking about until I got older. I now do. Nothing, nothing changes for the better, unless good people, like-minded people come together and fight for it. I mean, it is that simple. I'm here to plead with all of you to follow Jose Andres lead, you know, to follow the lead of those of us in Congress who are trying to remedy this problem and fix this problem. Let us end hunger now. Let us end it now forever. And you know, it's not a pipe dream. It's, it's, this, is, this is doable. And so to everybody here, I, I thank you for giving me the time, and I ask you to join with us in this campaign to end hunger now. Thank you very much.